homicide detective, Rod Wheeler. Good evening, Rod. You've been in Ferguson evening, since Jack. last night. Uh, you spent the day talking to people of Ferguson, including the relatives of Michael Brown, the 18-year-old who was shot and killed. What are they telling you? It's a lot that they're telling me, Judge, but let me just share with you one thing that's going on right now as I speak, and just so that the viewers know what we're looking at, I'm actually at the police command center, and just when you were interviewing the previous guests, I watched about 50 to 60 high-powered police vehicles pull in. You may can see them over my shoulder here, including several new SWAT units. Now, why is that significant, Judge? Last night, Judge, I, you probably heard me say this earlier today, I was out here, I was right in the middle of everything, and I didn't see a police car anywhere in the area and it wasn't until about 1 30 a.m. after the uh, the bottles were being thrown and the rocks were being thrown that I finally saw the uh, the police cars after that time last night and that's when the rioting was going on the good news is today all day today I've been down here on Flawson Street and there were a number of protests there was a number of uh, demonstrations but everything today was very peaceful there was no trouble today at all and that's when I had the opportunity judge to speak to some of uh, Mike Brown's family and friends and a lot of people around his age and everybody was very cordial. Uh, Jesse uh, Jackson was here and uh, there was no trouble at all today, Judge. And what is the family saying to you? What do they want? There's, that's a good question. There's two things, Judge, that I want to tell you that these people have told me over and over, Rod, this is what we want. Number one, they want the police chief in this city to go. That's a given. They think that he's been lying to them. They think he's the one that's, you know, behind all of this problem that they're having here in Ferguson. And the second thing that they want, Judge, they want justice for Michael Brown. They want this police officer, and they honestly feel this way, Judge, that this police officer committed a murder in cold blood on Canfield Street, which is about two blocks up, and I was on that street today. They want that officer indicted and charged with murder of the first degree. As you and I both know so well, Rod, I mean, there's a lot of steps before that. Uh, you know, we don't know if Michael Brown uh, was shot in the front or in the back. I mean, we know he was unarmed. We need to know was, you know, if his hands were up, was he facing the police officer? Was he shot in the back? Uh, we need to know if a round went off in that vehicle uh, and if there was a struggle in the vehicle, you know, which, which guy was it? Was it Michael Brown or was it the other guy? guy. Uh, I mean, there's a lot that we don't know right now. And if there is, you know, a determination on the part of the family and it doesn't go their way, what do you think is going to happen there? Well, I think people are going to continue to be upset. But let me just say this one other thing, Judge, and you'll find this very interesting from our backgrounds. There was 40 FBI agents in Ferguson this morning when I was over on Canfield Street. I saw them. I talked to them. They were knocking on doors. And you know what they said to me? They said, we're over here investigating. We want to get to the bottom of this. So I think, Judge, that is maybe a, uh, a ray of light in the, in the future. I know that they're out there, the FBI agents, the Department of Justice. I think we're going to see something happen this week positive that hopefully, Judge, will bring this matter to a close. Well, you know, I, uh, first of all, the FBI and, and, and Justice cannot bring it to a close. It's only the local, poli uh, the, the local DA, who I understand is a former president of the, New York, of the uh, uh, National DA's Association, who will handle that case. The feds can't take that away from him. They're doing a civil rights case. But I have to tell you, Jim. Jim Comey, former United States attorney, who is now the head of the uh, FBI, is a savvy, smart, former prosecutor, and with him at the helm with the FBI, I have a lot more faith in him than I do in Eric Holder. But uh, uh, l let me just ask you one more question. When you talk about this police chief, Rod, you, you've done this for many years. I mean, what do you think of the number of, 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 of press conferences he had? He says one thing in the morning, another thing in the afternoon. I, I, yeah. I happen to agree that he's got to go. What do you think? Yeah. Here's what I think, you know, and I don't want to beat this chief chief up. Enough people here are doing that. I think, Judge, the chief was just over, in over his head. This is a small police department, Judge, and you know how small police departments are. Sometimes they don't have the experience that we have in major cities like Washington, D.C. or New York. I think that the chief just really needs to retire. They need to get rid of him. They need somebody else to take the helm here. And I think that's when the community will start healing itself again, Judge. Well, then you do agree with me, even though you don't want to dump on the, on the chief. Rod Wheeler, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, Judge.